Hey everybody, I'm Cleo Stryker, and I'm going to do an in-service on the arthroscopy equipment. Okay, if you look right here, this is going to be your, your pump, your arthroscopy pump, we call it the cross flow. And if you look here, this is going to be your crossfire tube. This is your energy and your power for your shaver and for your wand. Okay. So, first thing here I want to mention is Chloe found out that while this is on, this is your little home screen that you're going to see, there's a joke. This thing will tell you jokes. If you click this little center screen, well, it also says I like comments. That one. I work well under pressure. <laughs> Who picked this music? Okay, so it gets a little. We haven't gone through all of these. There's not a joke yet. Okay, anyway, <laughs> there's some. There's some little bits of motivation slash jokes in there. If you ever want to mess with that. Um, so to prep this, first off, you have your inflow cassette. This is what it'll look like. It's a disposable. And what you want to do is after you unwrap this, you're going to keep. These, this, this is gonna go to your inflow on your cannula. Have a little notch right there if you ever wanna shut it off. So this is a sterile, we open yes. this onto the this field. This is disposable, you're gonna open this onto the field. This right here is gonna be the piece that you keep because you're gonna connect this to your cannula. These two things, you're gonna throw these off, okay? This is gonna be your cassette that plugs in and then also your spikes that go to your bag, okay? So. To plug this in, so say you've thrown this off, circulators come by, she's gonna plug this in. All you gotta do, it'll actually tell you on this diagram here, it'll say white side to the inside. White side to the inside, blue side to the outside, it gives you a little instruction right there. You're gonna click it in, there's a little spot to put your thumb until you hear it click. Okay, we're in. All right, it's gonna read that cassette. As you see here, it's going to actually have you pick a mode that you want to go into. I have created a mode for you here called the Irving ASC mode. Once it's highlighted, there's a little arrow in the bottom right hand corner. You're just going to click that. It's going to take you to your joints. You have your shoulder, your hip, your knee, and your small joints, your elbow, your wrist, and your ankle. We're going to do a knee scope. So let's click this little knee right there. Now you're set to go. Basically at this point, You'd want to take these spikes. Okay. You're going to spike your bags. Make sure before you spike that these are closed. Otherwise, you're going to have water pour all over you. So close these, spike your bags, and then let these out. When the surgeon is ready, you're going to make sure that on this end, scrub or the, or the first system or the surgeon, they're going to have this open. Take this little cap off. You want this open first off, and I want to put it into a bucket. Because what we're going to do is this button right here, if we push it, that's going to prime the pump. What that does is basically pushes water through the lines, it pushes out all the air, and you really want that, otherwise the, the image is going to be really bad. So make sure they have this open before you prime that pump. I have a question. Yes. So you found on previous uh, kind of arthroscopy pumps in the past that if you do not un like if you don't release that little clamp that it can mess up the whole tubing system does is that the case here yes so what what could happen is there could be some air in the lines now in terms of cassette failure no okay there won't be cassette failure the surgery will still be able to it just may not be as optimal so it might be something that you want to pop out the cassette redo it now only know if, if you if you've used this for a while it's, it's going to expire if you try to pop them again but maybe you initially pop it out put it back in, prime again, you can always do that, okay? Um, now, if you were to take it out, wait 10 minutes, put it back in, it's not gonna work, okay? Because um, these do expire. But that's something that if it does happen, you can always reprime, okay? Um, so you, once you push prime, okay, and it's ready to go, it, once the prime is done, this little bar, I'm not gonna do it because we don't have water in here, in here, I'm saving. But there's gonna be a bar, and it's gonna show you basically the average time amount it takes to, to get the air out of the line. Once it goes through that priming sequence, the pump will be on and ready to go. If you want to stop that water, there's no need to stop it up here. You can just clip this over here. Okay, you can clip that and wait. You can stop it from here manually too. Once this prime button goes away, there'll be a stop button that you can click. Um, and then one way to know if you're trying to look from the table, say you're scrubbing, you're trying to see if this is going, there's going to be a little dot that's going to be circled in this. And that's going to show you that the pump is running. Okay, right now we have our pressure set at 30. If you ever wanted to increase your pressure, there's little buttons right here, plus and minus signs. You can just click that, 
you can subtract it. And that's gonna keep your pump steady, okay? I'm gonna go over hooking this up to the cannula, but first I'm gonna go over some outflow tubing. We also have some outflow tubing. The reason they use this is for fluid management. A lot of surgeons that um, really want good fluid management in their shoulders will use something like this. But basically, it's the same thing, same concept. If you want to hook this up, and actually, I'm going to go back to the beginning just so we can show it again. So, if you were to pop this in, which, if you do one first or second, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Hook it in. Once you have it in there, this will actually give you a little green check mark on the screen saying that it's good to go. Give it a second. We'll read it a sec. All right, same thing. Choosing our mode, choosing our knee. Now you can see the screen looks a little different now because you have an outflow cassette in there. If you look at this, okay, on the screen, okay, there's gonna be a couple things happening. There's gonna be outflow rolling. You have control of your shaver and your RF device. If you look at our ends here, similar to the other one, scrub, you're gonna to wanna to keep these three ends, okay? The other two ends are connected. See, you have your cassette, and you have this. This hooks up to your suction device. So this is hooked up to your Neptune or whatever suction device you have, this is what you hook it to. There is, you can always clamp it off, but it comes open. It'll come open like this, so you don't have to worry about unclamping it. But if you look at these, one is for your RF, so this is gonna be your wand or your energy, some people call it your ablation. This is gonna be your shaver. This is gonna to be to the outflow portion of the cannula, okay? Say you're using this cassette and you only have a shaver. You can always just clip this off, but you wanna clip this off because if you have this open, okay, there's gonna be a gap in the system. So make sure you clip this if you're not using it. But otherwise, let's hook these up. And when those devices are being used, the pump will activate. It's kind of a smart pump, so you don't have to mess with it. Once you plug it in and you hook up all these, you don't have to mess with stuff. It'll do its own thing. Okay? Um, I'm gonna go over the shaver real fast as well. Here's your shaver. These are gonna come on your trays. I'm sure some of you have seen this before. This is your standard striker shaver. This is your end that you're gonna throw off the field. Looks like this. Unscrews. This little red dot right here is what you're gonna line up when you're plugging in. But right here on your energy device, you have your crossfire. And over here is even a little diagram for where to plug your shaver into. You're gonna line up that red dot, push the button, it's gonna pop on, okay? Now, if I ever wanted to run this, okay, I could click this top button, it's gonna to turn it on, you can hear it. Middle button is gonna change my mode. If you see on the screen, I just went from oscillate to forward, back to oscillate. And if I wasn't forward and I wanted to turn it into reverse, I could push this blue button and that would pop me into reverse. But this middle button, that'll pop you back to oscillate. This is the one that the surgeons will really use the most. A lot of them won't go into reverse. They'll just stay in either oscillate or forward. And we actually have a burr right here. We can play with. This is what your burr is gonna look like. Your cutter will look just the same, just with a cutter on the end instead of a burr. But when you're turning, play, uh, connecting this, you see these little notches right on the top of there. These little notches on these, this too. If you line that up, it'll click in and you actually, it'll register, it'll tell you you're using a 4.0 barrel burr. It'll let you know that it's working and when it's plugged in, okay? And if you click that top button, It'll pop on, okay? These are automatic that if you plug in a burr, it'll put you in a forward, not oscillate, and it'll put your RPMs at a specific RPM. So you can always increase these, okay, with foot pedal. Okay, that's the best way to do it. Or um, if you put in a cutter, this will go to oscillate automatically, so you don't have to mess with it. If you ever wanted to eject this, there's a little button on the side there. Put that, pops right up, just like that. Also, I'm gonna go over the wand. This is what your standard wand will look like if you're ever to use this for a case. And this is what your end would look like. What is the purpose of a wand? So the wand, okay, so to control fluid management, again, stop bleeding. A lot of surgeons will also use this to cut tissue inside. 
they find it easier than shaving um, by ablating it. Um, it's kind of the main purpose of it. But a lot of them use it for fluid management. There's any bleeders in there, you can, if you've ever been in an arthroscopy case, you know you can't see anything when it's bleeded like that. So this is a, it's a great device for that. But you look at your plug-in right there. There's actually a little arrow on it. You plug this in, it has a little spot for your wand. Pop it in. I'm not gonna do this because I don't wanna mess with anything. But um, this would be to cut, this would be to coag, and this would be to control your power. You see up on here now, now on the screen there's two different ones. You have your surface wand and you have your barrel bar connected. Now, when I plug in the foot pedal, which is right here, that's what it looks like. And I connect this, there's a little spot. Your foot pedal right down there. So you can see it. Okay? There's actually a little foot pedal up on top of it, there's a little foot. In the diagram that'll tell you which one you're controlling right now. Now, if I was to push this right now, right now it says I'm on the barrel burr, right? It's gonna activate the barrel burr. If I wanted to shift over to my wand, I click this number two button right there, it will tell you, surface, that you shifted over to your wand. Okay? If you ever want to control the modes, this will go lower, this will go higher in power. If you ever want to control the shaver, this will go lower in the shaver, this will go higher on the shaver, just so you know. But As a standard set, right? Yeah, so there's like a high, a medium, and a low. Then it'll pop out. Um, but number two, that's the big one. If you're ever, if the surgeon's like, how do I switch over to my next one? Number two. Number two. Okay. That's the gist of that. Okay. I'm also going to talk about the cannula real fast. This is your striker cannula. This is what it'll look like. This is your obturator. So let's go in. I'm gonna click in. So yeah, I'm pulling on it, it's not coming out. If you ever wanted to eject this, there's a little notch on the back. Put that and it'll pop right out. Same with your scope. You look on the scope, this is your arthroscope. There's little notches on it. And that's actually gonna click in. But one thing to make sure you do, if it, a lot of times it'll just click in and turn until it clicks in, right? But if you ever want it to be precise, if the light post is lined up with this notch, it'll always click in, okay? And then it spins freely, okay? But same thing, if you wanted to release it, look it like that. This is an inflow only cannula. So for inflow, you just take your little inflow line and you just connect it to either side, screw it on, you're ready to go. From here, you can unclip this and control your fluid from this little no. This you can set up on a drain on it. Some surgeons, very surgeon preference. Some will put a drain, some will put an out, um, suction tubing on it. But that's the gist of the cannula. Any questions, Cliff? If we were to do multiple scope cases, whether we were flipping or repeating in the same room, is there extra connection tubing to where the sterile side is the only one that gets thrown off and we're able to use this pump? Um, I believe we do have some day use tubing that we, that we do have, that we have in stock. Um, we can talk about that, but usually it comes in a cassette like this and you gotcha. just toss off the cassette. Well, thank you so much. Yes.